Mr. Smith, New Sacred Missionary Baptist Church, 2186 talks to me on Road Memphis, Tennessee, coming to you from our sanctuary. We're thanking you for joining us this night again for our weekly Bible study, uh, looking, at, uh, looking at the Sunday School lesson for April 24th, uh, 2022. Uh, the general subject is Freedom in the King, Freedom in the King. For those who don't know, uh, the notes to accompany uh, this lesson are found on my Facebook page, J.W. Smith at the New Southern Missionary Baptist Church Facebook page uh, on Facebook. We ask that you would like us and, and follow us on Facebook and to please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we thank God for you being here tonight. Uh, our um, stream may look a little strange tonight because we, we, don't, we don't have all the equipment, but we thank God that we're here. Amen. That we have, uh, that we're able to do, to do the stream. Again, we have a good lesson for us and we thank you for joining us and just again, keep up with us and support us. We need your support uh, as the world needs the word of God. Uh, again, we're looking at April 24th, 2022. 20, uh, the general subject is freedom in the king, freedom in the king, coming from the gospel according to St. John, the, the supplemental gospel of St. John, the latest, the last gospel, uh, St. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Again, the notes are on the Facebook page, J.W. Smith and New Salem Missionary Baptist Church Frazier. Again, we do ask you to support us. Uh, if you uh, would like to, you can support our and so our ministry. Uh, our cash app is dollar sign New Salem Frazier. God bless your heart. Looking at tonight's lesson, we're still in the spring quarter, uh, but it's still in unit two, liberating gospels. And we've been in Matthew. Tonight, we switch over to the gospel according to St. John. Now, uh, the gospel of, of John, uh, John tells us why he writes. Uh, in John 20 and 31, he said, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that believing you may have life in his name. And again, so Matthew writes that, that Jesus Christ is the king of kings. Mark writes that Jesus Christ was a suffering servant. Luke writes that Jesus Christ was the son of man he, 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 about his humanity. But John writes about his deity, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, amen, and he is God. Unlike the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, John's purpose is not to present a chronological narrative of Jesus' life, but he is trying to display the deity of Christ. Again, the synoptic gospels were written at the same, around the same time to give a different perspective on the life of Jesus Christ. John comes and writes sometime later after he's seen the gaps in the theology and gaps in understanding that people still have after reading Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and he fills in the gaps. And so he is just called a supplemental gospel. And so he's writing to really strengthen the faith of the second generation believers. Amen. Uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke were writing to sustain the first generation believers. John comes to write to sustain the faith of the second generation of believers and again begin to bring about faith in the others. Remember, Jesus uh, told the apostles uh, in Acts 1 8 that they should receive power and he wanted them to go and spread the gospel. But the problem was there was a tendency to hang around Jerusalem. And so the Lord allowed them to be scattered out of Jerusalem and to expand the gospel. And, and this fits John because that brings about the second generation of believers. And while John is trying to help us understand that Jesus is God, he's also trying to capture, amen, the new believers into the, into the body, into the body of faith. And so watch this. He also seeks to correct false teaching that is spread in the first century. Okay, because after reading Matthew, Mark, and Luke, again, the naysayers never went away, the, the opponents, the opponents never went, went away, and so they have begun to corrupt the understanding of believers. Now, watch this. Uh, one doctrine was the Christ spirit, the Messiah spirit, and they were saying the spirit came upon Jesus at his baptism and left him at his birth left them uh, at the resurrect at, 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 at the resurrection. And so they believed in a Christ spirit that Jesus was 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 not divine in his birth, that he was not divine in his in his in his infants infancy. He was not divine in his adolescence. He was not even divine in his adulthood. Amen. They believed that the Christ spirit came upon him when he was baptized, when the Holy Spirit came down. 
Amen. They said that was the, that was the Christ spirit. And then it left him at, at the crucifixion. I'm sorry. When he died on the cross, that spirit left him. That's why he was able to die. So uh, John, again, comes to help us understand that Jesus is God. He's all God. He's all man, but yet he's all God. Uh, he reinforces the immaculate conception. Amen. For the Holy Spirit conceived the Son uh, in the Virgin Mary. Amen. And Jesus was, 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 was still divine even in the grave because he, Peter said he went to the grave and preached to the captives and set them free. Amen. He was divine in resurrection, not just in the crucifixion. He was divine in divine resurrection because he said, Now all power in heaven is given unto me. And so John goes to great lengths to prove the full deity, amen, of Jesus Christ. Now, again, John is a supplemental gospel. The others are synoptic gospels, which means they're going to share a lot in common. Now watch this. Uh, St. Mark is only 3% unique, which means 97% of what Mark says you find in Matthew, right. Luke, and John. Right. All right? The uh, book of Luke is only 42% unique. Which means 58% of what Luke says you'll find in Matthew, Mark, and John. All right? Uh, Matthew, he writes a whole lot, so his is 56% 56 unique. Which means 44% of what you find in Matthew, you'll also find in Mark, Luke, and John. But John being a supplemental gospel means that his writing is 90% unique. Which means ninety percent of what the stuff, the other things John brings to the table, you won't find in other, other gospels. That's why he is a supplemental because he's bringing mostly new stuff. Again, when it comes to the crucifixion, when it comes to the Last Supper, when it comes to resurrection, he like all the gospels. They have to record that because the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the center of the gospel and the foundation of the church. But when it comes to the writing of John, Amen. He deals with 90% unique take. Nowhere else do you find Jesus saying, I am the living bread. Nowhere else do we say, I'm the resurrection of life. Nowhere else does Jesus say, I am the living water. Amen. When it comes to great I am, you find those in the book of John because John is teaching us, amen, about this Christ of ours called Jesus. Amen. And then uh, John, uh, John has a unique relationship with Jesus. Amen. So he's able to talk about some things that the other disciples are able to talk about. John was there when Jesus was transfigured on the on, 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 on the Mount of Transfiguration. John was there. Uh, he was one whom he, Jesus loved. He was the one that when Jesus died on the cross, he said, son, behold thy mother, mother, behold thy son. Amen. John was one of his inner circles. So John had some personal stuff that he can begin to talk about as it relates to Jesus. Amen. God bless you. So now that is the gospel according to St. John, the supplemental gospel, not the synoptic gospel. Questions? All right. As we come to this context, now, John chapter 7 through 9, amen, are not recorded in any other gospel, okay? So, all of John chapter 7 through John chapter 9, you won't find anywhere else this unique text, okay? I told you it's 90% unique, okay? And so, our lesson is in chapter 8, so what you find in chapter 8, you're not going to find in the other gospels, okay? Now, our text is part of a longer discourse. That Jesus is giving at the Feast of the Tabernacles in Jerusalem, okay? Now, what discourse? the Feast of the Tabernacles. Okay. He's giving at the Feast of the Tabernacles, which is celebrated in Jerusalem, which started on the 15th day of the month of Tishri. I gave you all, all that Jewish calendar, but Tishri, just so you know, is September, October. Late September, early October. Okay, so the Feast of the Tabernacles was celebrated, first of all, because it was the end of the harvest. Okay, they thank God for the plenty, and it also was a celebration to remind them of God's provision during their wilderness wandering. You got me? Let them know they rely on God, and watch this. Even any farmer knows that he relies on God. That's the good thing about farming; it's close to the earth, and the farmer knows he got to pray for sunshine. He got to pray for rain. Got to pray for good weather. Amen. Because it takes all things working together for the good of the farmer. Amen. Those of us who remove from the earth and on the jobs don't necessarily realize that. And so with the Feast of the Tabernacle, we're there to remind them of their dependence on God and God's provision. 
The farmer know that he can plant water, but if God don't get increased, there'll be no crop. Amen. If he hold back the rain, amen. Uh, and, 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 and so the Feast of Tabernacle were, were, was there to remind them. Now, watch this. During the first six days of the feast, the priest would go to the pool of Siloam. Y'all know about the pool of Siloam, don't you? It's a healing pool. When Jesus took, put the spit in the blind man's eyes and said, go dip thyself in the pool, he would go to the pool of Siloam for six days. And he'd get water. And he'd come back to the temple and he'd pour water across the altar for six days. On the seventh day, he'd walk around the altar with no water. Amen. Because that was his way of symbolizing that God through the Messiah would one day provide water. Seventh day number completion. Amen. Which means God will provide, God will provide the complete water. Amen. You find that one of the promises in Joel 3.18 where the Lord said in that day the Messiah will come and he will bring water. All right, now watch, okay, now watch this. Jesus uses that backdrop to introduce himself as the living water. You got me? Priest walking around, talking about water. Jesus used that term, used that time to introduce himself as living water. In other words, the water that you all look for is in me. Amen. The water the Old Testament promised God fulfills in me. All right? Now, same feast. At nighttime, in the court of women of the temple, they were like big oil lamps to light the court, keep the court lit, well lit. So Jesus goes there at night and he introduces himself. He says, I am the light <laughs> of the world. Are you, are, are you all with me? So he uses the situation of this feast to introduce himself as the water in the day and the light at night. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. I, 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 you all still with me? And, 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 and who the, he's who will follow me should never walk in darkness. He introduces himself. And so he announces himself as a Messiah. This is what he's doing. And this is a John thing. He wants us to understand who he is. So he announces himself as the true, as the one true Messiah that the world has been waiting on, and the Messiah that the Word of God speaks of. Are you with me? He's the Messiah that the Father has sent into the world to bring fruition all the promises. That's why, that's why he said, I came out to destroy the law, but through me the law might be fulfilled. Amen. And, 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 on, and on my commandments, you can hang all the law. And all the prophets. In John 8, 28, then said Jesus unto them, When have ye lifted, when ye lift up the Son of Man, then ye should know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. Amen. I am the living word which come down from heaven. Amen. To teach you the written word. Question, 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 question. All right. So here we go this lesson we in John 8, verses 31 through 38, and, and this is a large, this is just a, a part of the larger context that, that, that we just went through. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Now, you're not talking to everybody. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Some conversations are not for everybody. Because if you give the wrong conversation to anybody, they'll derail the conversation and you start talking about something else. Are you with me? Imagine how many times you've been in a Sunday school class and, and, and you drift off the lesson and start talking about auto mechanics. Or start talking about bake off. Well, that's been an amazing good conversation, that's not why you're here. And so you have to keep your conversation narrow. And so he's only speaking, first of all, to the believers. I, 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 you all here with me? And sometimes folk have a problem with that. We think that he should all be just only just believe that he ought to be everybody because he's God. Yeah? But he's not everybody's father. He's everybody's creator. He's not everybody's father. He's God of all. But he's not Lord to all. 
Are you, are you with me? So he's talking to those who claim a relationship. Remember, the seventh chronicle of God said, You're my people. He didn't say, You're everybody. Are you with me? You're my people. And so he's talking to the believers, those who believe on him. He said, If ye continue in my word, then ye are indeed my disciples. Now, the second part of that verse starts with the biggest word in the universe if. If. And if we can't handle that two letter word, the rest of the verse is a null, is null and void. Are you with me? Watch this. The word but says, I'm negating everything that has preceded me. Are you with me? Yeah, 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 but. Which means I just cancel all that stuff out. I'm going to tell you what I really want, I really think. If works the other way. If has the ability to negate everything that comes behind it. If you can't have the if. I, 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 are you with me? So, so we have to be careful about the if, because the if will trip you up. He said, if you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples. So, now watch this. Watch how this is structured. Then said Jesus to the Jews which believed on him. If you continue my word, then you are indeed my disciple. Which means all believers were not disciples. Mm. See, a disciple is a learner. All church members are not disciples. Teach, Pastor. <laughs> You'll see the disciples in Bible study. You'll see the disciples in Sunday school. All worshipers are not disciples. Some people come for the emotion, and some come for the understanding. And can I help you with this? Your emotions will never enlighten you. Your emotions can only lead to darkness, because that's where they originate. And y'all hear? See, people keep coming to church looking for emotions to, to better them. Uh-uh, your emotions won't better you because your emotions are fickle. They change and drop them hat. That's why you can be in here singing in the choir, go out in the park and start cussing. Watch this. If you continue in my word, you can be, you are indeed my disciple. Jesus questioned those who claim belief to see if it's true belief. Verse 27, 28 said, Then Jesus cried in the temple, saying, as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and you know whence I am. And I am not come of myself, but of he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. So watch this. He's saying, it's more than knowing where I came from. That don't mean you know me. You may know where somebody is born, they name, even their social security number, but you necessarily don't know that person. Jesus said there's more to me that you got to study to know if you want to be my disciple. Simple curiosity won't get it. Some folk follow Jesus because they're just curious. They just, they, they, they just you know, hey, let, let, let me check into this. But they are, they are not a believer. But true discipleship means to continue in the word of God. The, a lot of these folks follow Jesus because they were amused or amazed. And that's why most worshipers come to church. They come to be amused or amazed. They want to be entertained. I want you to sing to me to make me feel good and preach something to me to make me feel good. And when you ask me to participate, then I get upset. That's why most people don't like offering because it's participatory. Most people want to have to speak in service. But watch this. Worship means you bring something as well as receive something. Worship is where we exchange exhortation. 
Are you, are, are you with me? We exchange words of encouragement as we exalt one another under every, under every good work. But that's not why some come. We come to be amused and amazed. And John emphasizes that Jesus has a problem with, with flawed faith. He says in 448 that Jesus said to them, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And that's what some folk are looking for. They'll follow prayer cloth anywhere. They'll go out there and wait for a healing service, but won't come to a worship service. And many people will follow Jesus just to be healed. Is that not what he told Thomas? Thomas, you believe because you've seen? He said, but blessed are the day who believe that have not seen. Look at the signs and wonders. No. Uh-uh. Study the word. And, and can, can I help you with this? The more you know of the word of God, the fewer signs and wonders you need because the word contains all the signs you ever need. There's nothing in this world going on now that the word of God does not tell. And so when I ask God for a sign, I'm asking for an age of faith, which means I want you to turn some of my blessings into a sign. Y'all just miss what I said. When you start asking for signs, you, 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 you limit your blessings because you say, Lord, I don't have the faith. You got that? And so he said, you look, if you don't see sign, you won't believe. Now, the Old Testament listed Moses as the spokesperson of God. Okay? And those who did not want to hear Jesus leaned on that. You ain't none of Moses. In the Old Testament, claim Moses. That's why you're going to hear me say this again. Beware of sermons that consistently rely on Old Testament. Beware of messages. Let me say this. Where every message is from the Old Testament. See, I, see there are some, some ministers who never preach New Testament. Every sermon they got come out of the Old Testament. Why? Something wrong with that. See, you, you got to cross me over. And that's what Jesus said folk are having a problem with. They're not coming over to the new covenant. Now don't get me wrong, the Old Testament is there for a reason. But that's not where we live. See, Christians can't live in the Old Testament because we live, we, we're resident in Christ who showed up in the New Testament. So I, I'm in a different neighborhood. Amen. I, I, I don't forget the home house. Old Testament is my home house. But that's not where I live now. Uh, y'all, y'all, y'all hear me? And so watch this. So they rightfully claim the will of Moses disciples. Are you with me? And so we're going to follow Moses. But Jesus is trying to help understand, yeah, but now God reveals himself more thoroughly through me. And to hear Christ now, amen, is to hear God. Run with me real quickly to this event that James, Peter, James, and John only went to called the Mount Transfiguration. Matthew 17. Behold, there appeared unto him Moses, see there, and Elijah. And guess what? They were having a conversation. Why? And Peter then went to sleep. And then Peter woke up. Watch this. Uh, where am I? And appeared Moses and Elijah talking to him. Then as the people said unto him, Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make three tabernacles. One for thee, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Now Moses represents the law. Elijah represents the prophets. Jesus represents grace and truth. And that's why the Lord said, on me you can hang all the law and all the prophets. And look, so look at God's response. And while he expects, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I will please. Hear ye him. And the Bible said, When the cloud came, Moses Elijah vanished, because Moses Elijah not, are not the one to speak for God now. In such a time, God spoke through prophets, 
But in these latter times, he speak to his son. Are you are, are, are y'all are y'all here just now? How much are we missing? How much are we missing? Help me understand. In all things, as you speak and as you share John's, uh, John's writing, it appears that we are missing a whole lot, even when you go back to raising the fact that G Jesus is not Lord for most of us. Right. We're missing so much until it's almost that uh, that the Sabbath work itself, we know it's complete because he lived. But as far as our growth, development, and understanding, we're just missing so much. We're missing so much because we have been trained on the Ten Commandments in the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer. And that's where we want to go. We want to get Psalm 100, Psalm 20, Psalm 23rd number, Psalm of John 3, 16. We think that's enough to get to heaven. Well, watch this. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are not the Gospels. Lean a lot on the Old Testament, especially Matthew, because Matthew was talking to the Jews. And that's their background. If you notice, don't notice, in John, there's going to be less reference to the Old Testament than anybody, because John is trying to pull us out of that thinking. See, even today, we count sin only in the Ten Commandments. If I hadn't broken the Ten Commandments, we don't even think each other to have sinned. Are you with me? But, there are, but the Ten Commandments are just an overall guide. There are a thousand ways to sin. He said, Jesus has sold the man thinking in his heart. If any man hated it in his heart, he gives you a murder. But we stuck in our old way of sin, of our old way of thinking, which allows us to sin unconsciously. Our license to sin is not found in Jesus. Our license to sin is found in our dependence on the Old Testament. What we understand, man, amen, was incapable of keeping law, so we don't try to keep it. But Jesus said, be holy. And I am holy, which means we ought to be found striving. When you say Christ is not Lord of a believer's life, just, just say to one heaven except in Christ, uh -huh. then that individual, if they're not studying or doing according to what John's doing, have no resources in the gift itself. Which means that if he's not Lord of my life, my prayers are not heard. Well, yes and no. Yes and no. Let me just say it this way. Let me just say it this way. The first gift is the gift of salvation. Right. All other gifts come as a result of sanctification. The first gift is justification. Which means even the common Christian has that gift, but he'll have no other. They're at his disposal, but he does not have them. Jesus told Peter, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you. He may sift you like wheat. But I pray you that your faith fail you not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. They were still brethren. They just weren't converted. And Jesus said, Peter, you were not converted either, because you're not where I need you to be. And so we find more of the Lord as we find more in the Lord. Right. Uh, I, 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 you give me? See, I will give. It, it, it's too many folk on the pew when I want to know what my spiritual gift is. You ain't going to find it that way. Sit on no pew. You got to get in the way. Amen. We sit up here asking for stuff on the pew. Ain't nothing coming to you. He did that one time, no matter. He given you life. He given you air. He given you right mind. He don't give you nothing else to know you. We got to start exploring the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. To experience him closer. Yes, sir. Okay, so speak up. Call him Lord, or we consider him Lord. We still practicing that under sanctification, right? Under justification. We call him Lord. But calling it does not make it so. Right. As I'm trying to tell you about Easter. 
And remember, it's uncalling does not make it so. I've got to put in, I've got to put in the work. I've got to put in the work. And am I asking your question? Yeah, so we're not complete even if we consider or call him Lord. We're not, we're not complete. We're still, we must always be growing. That's why nobody can ever retire from the study of the word. Nobody. There's not a degree at me to let you retire from the study of God's word. Because the word will illuminate you from wherever you are. I said, wherever well, you are, if you think you're at the top, the word will illuminate you even there. There's always some more, some, some more to get. All right? So, he introduced himself. And so, they were trying to stick to Moses. John and Jesus said, no, uh-uh. If you want to be my disciple, you can change my word. And to continue, and Psalm 1 said, means to meditate in it both day and night. And night. Uh, 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 you, watch this. The word will bloom in you. Why did it say something then? Like a flower, the word will bloom in you. Amen. The word will be like, the word will be, be, be in your spirit like, like half done spaghetti or half done pinto bean. You know what they do, Lord? When you have done pinto bean, they'll swell up. God's word will get in your soul and spirit, it'll swell you up. Amen. It, 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 it illuminates the things in it that you never thought possible. That's why Paul said he's able to do exceeding and abundantly. Above all. Above all. Yeah, that's one thing. So he said, to my sight me to continue my word and watch this. My only response to learning the word is to submit to him. Hmm. And then I'm drawn closer into him and I have more access. That's why he said, if he abided in me and my word abided in you, you can ask what you will. That it is his again. But am I abiding in the word? It's, it's amazing how many of us pray daily but never get in the word. You don't even know how to pray until you get in God's word. Because we must pray in his will. What is God's will? His will is his word. So what you praying for? So somebody said, did he answer our prayers? Probably with him. Because we're praying outside of his will. Until we start eating his word, ain't nothing in my life going to change. I'm going to keep shedding the same tears, falling in the same ditches. Because his word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my feet like light in my path. The steps of a good man are ordered by the word of God and he delights in his way. If I want some delight in my way, I have to get in the word. And we keep trying to find a way around. Amen. Ain't no way around it. Not if you want to be, not if you want your life to change. But if we just have to come to church crying every Sunday, it is what it is. It'll feel good to go back. Amen. <laughs> Get a fix. 32. Boy, this, this lesson is deep. I, I got to move. 32. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth should make you free. I keep on making the same mistakes that I know, I don't know the truth. I keep on going the wrong way, I know the right way. And folk keep telling me, giving me advice, and trying to be wrong, but they don't know either. I'm going to a doctor, to a psychiatrist who was saved. Absolutely. Why did he take me? I need a praying doctor. When my kidney shut down in 1999, they thought I was dead. They thought I was dead. Called my family three times. But my doctor stood there and she was putting the shun in my neck because all the rest of them gone now. And she was teaching a student. And I heard her say, ain't it amazing how God allows us to do this? And that conversation changed my attitude because she realized it wasn't her doing nothing. That if God didn't touch me, and guess what God did? <laughs> yeah. God took them kidneys. I ain't seen Dallas and Nick Lennon since 19, how long was that in 1999? That's 23 years. Yeah. Oh, Haven't had a doubt. They were Dallas out of me twice a day. Mm. And my kid, the kid doctor told me, she said, Mr. Smith, you can hold this file I got. Because yeah. everybody that was in here, he was in this file carrying the dead. Wow. But look at God. Don't you, don't you, don't you make me die out of there. She had enough sense to know 
Amen. And, and, and I believe, I believe the Lord touched me because my doctor had some sin. Amen. You better know who, who you better know who got their hand on you. Yes, Jesus said that you know the truth when you get in my word. You know the truth. You ain't gotta go to Sister Ruby. You ain't gotta read the, 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 the what you call the dang new paper every day, the horoscope, all that stuff. How somebody don't know you gonna tell you about your life? I just love it on Facebook. Within 36 hours, whoever read this post is gonna have so and so so money. I take them back and say, well, you get yours, give me some of it. <laughs> Lord Jesus, Jesus. Listen, Jesus speaks of eternal freedom versus earthly freedom. Following Jesus, understand, expand, he expands. I told you, just like a, a, a half done pinto being as well up in you, the words up in you, he expands our knowledge of God, of God's truth. Old Testament taught, taught truth in terms of salvation. Okay? Uh, Psalm 25, he said, He lead me, teach me uh, for God that you are my salvation. John continued to stay the truth is his salvation. But salvation could not come by Jesus Christ. Are you with me? So Jesus sums up everything in his person and his work. And I say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. We're made free through the salvation of Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God. John 1 14, the Word became flesh. And we befell, we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Want to know more truth? Know more about Jesus, not about reading newspaper or watching more news on TV. He says, and they answered him. Watch this. Smart now, folk. Ain't hearing nothing. We have Abraham's seed. And we're never in bondage. <laughs> and I read that verse and say, fool. <laughs> Don't you know right now, as you run in your mouth, you are in the wrong jurisdiction? you ain't in bondage. Do you, not, do you not see where you are? Amen. But watch this. That wasn't the point. They, they were violating the law of Moses. Moses in Deuteronomy, God told Moses to command Israel never to forget the bondage. Why? Because to forget the bondage means to forget God's deliverance and forget his salvation. And your dependence on him. So there's a new run of the law. You, you supposed to remember that. Now watch this. They're speaking from a position that was our granddaddy. Ain't never been no slave. Well, uh, let me help these crazy folk I see on Dr. Phil. <laughs> folk whose skin color look like mine. Every black person in America is a slave. Has been. Teach, Pastor. Because we're enslaved, you're enslaved by a system that was designed to keep you down. I know I just made a whole lot of folk mad too. Every poor person in America, whether you're black or white, is a slave. Because again, you're living in a system that's designed to keep you oppressed. Why do you need my credit score to determine my homeowner's insurance rate? Why do you need my credit score to determine how much going to charge me for insurance? You're a slave. You don't believe you're a slave to stop paying taxes. You think that's your car? You think that's your house? Stop paying taxes. <laughs> and so they said now, oh, Abraham, see, he ain't never been in slavery. They're looking at a physical. They don't understand what Jesus is talking about. They're thinking physical freedom. 
Because they're, Jesus is trying to teach heavenly things. But we continue to be earthly minded. And if you don't come out of your earthly thinking, you'll never understand the things of God. Because the, his, those thoughts and your thoughts don't match. Their identity in God was based on a physical relationship to Abraham. And yeah, that was okay to Abraham the covenant. And so, but their response again violated the law of Moses because they were called to remember. And they failed to remember a dependence on God. Y'all excuse me. They failed to remember their dependence on God. And so they didn't understand what they were. And then relying on physical ancestry won't get you to God. Every tool. Now watch this. Mama's proud of working you on for so long. Are you with me? But at some point in time, I got to know him for myself. Look at what he said. How sayest thou, you shall be free? See, how you gonna know say we're gonna be free? We ain't never been, we ain't, and we ain't never been, been in money. Well, you don't look at where you are. You crying now because Roman, Rome is pressing you down. You look for a side to come get you out of what you mean. You are. They had no clue of the freedom that Jesus was talking about. Let's see what we're talking about in Revelation 118. He says, I am the I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive evermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. That's freedom you're talking about. Listen, bondage in this life does not compare to bondage in hell. Mm. Amen. The greatest lie we ever tell in this life is when we say I'm catching him. <laughs> you ain't catching nothing like him. <laughs> but keep on living like you're living and you'll find out. Are you all with me? See, when I was a child, I went to my daddy crying. Tell him about what I was going through. He said, boy, you ain't got no backbone. I wanted to smack him. <laughs> Glad I didn't, but I wanted to. But now that I got to understand the spiritual pressures of life, I understand what he was saying. And that's why God calls us children. We complain about going through something. We ain't been through nothing. Again, compare your life to Jesus and come back and tell them what you're going through. Come on, somebody. 34, and Jesus answered and said, Barely, barely, I say unto you. I ain't speaking to nobody. I'm God. I say unto you. Who's ever committed sin is a servant of sin. Uh oh. Somebody say, Ouch. Ouch. That means we live in slavery we don't even acknowledge. Watch this. The only way to sin is to yield to sin. And when you yield to sin, you became a servant. So we don't think ourselves slaves. But think about it. The only way to sin is yield to it. And when you yield to it, you became a servant. And so we become victims of our own slavery, imprisoned by our own desires and lusty flesh, fleshly lust. That only emotion go again. You can't think straight. You can't eat. You can't concentrate. You're getting sick, losing your hair, teeth falling out, stumble, messed up. Because we're slaying the sin. Including our emotions. Emotions, no matter how you feel about them, are natural. They're not spiritual. Questions? Hmm. They don't understand. 
that Jesus, what Jesus is speaking of, and so they are overlooking their own predicament. 34. If you committed sin, Paul said, was sold under sin. Y'all still there? And the only resolution is to seek righteousness above sin. That's how we become free. We began to seek righteousness. And watch this. It's a process. The further you become sanctified by the word of God, sanctification means we are being saved from the power of sin. Which means I'm gaining, finding, somebody said, learn to lean. I'm finding more power than I ever knew. Why? Because I'm allowing the word to empower me to sustain those things that used to conquer me. But it's in the word of God. It's not in the worship. It's in the word. Worship does not strengthen you. The word strengthens you. Worship is not your food. The word is your food. So many of us come to church starving and leave your starving. is designed to take you above your problems. Studying is designed to take you through your problem. Because when you come back down from worship, guess what's still there? The same old problem. Yes, ma'am. Now, it could be said that the Bible says The word given is topical. The word studied is internal. Are, 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 are you here with me? And the most effective medicine is that you take internally. Since the word preach is topical, I can walk out there in the rain and get it washed off. Now, Preferably, while some is being shot on me, preferably if I'm walking through the, you know, you kids used to, used to shoot water at the water hose on summertime when they didn't handle a swimming pool. Every once in a while, some of the water get in your mouth. Preferably, while you're being hosed down with a sermon, you may ingest enough of it. Hopefully. But in order, oh, I'm finna mess up now. You ask this now. Put your gloves on. In order to ingest the water, my mouth has to be open. And in order to ingest some of the word of the sermon, my heart must be open. Yo, 
still may you keep that and go practice somewhere else because that ain't real. No. Lean on him. And guess what? When you lean on him one time, you lean on him again. And then you start to trust him. And then you start to believe that he's going to meet you like he has every time before. Y'all still here? My time right now, but, I'm, but, 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 but listen, we deep, we, 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 we grow it deeper than water. What verse am I asking, somebody? 35. 35. And they answered. And he answered. The servant abided in the house. Whatever. Son abided. Now watch this. So he said, in other words, you a servant because you're serving the sin. But the servant spot in the house is never guaranteed. I don't care if you're the head butler or the head cook. You can be sold, shipped off, or whatever. But a son is a permanent member of the house. And he's heir no matter where he's, where he's at. He's still heir. Are you with me? So a son has an irrevocable position where the servant can be lost. And Jesus is saying the only way you can get eternally what God got for you most assuredly is to be connected to the Son. Are you all with me? In 35, I think of that Galatians down there. He said, he, he goes under, he, he said, we were servants. But now we're sons of God. We're laborers and co-laborers and short ass with Christ. And the good thing about that, we are adopted sons. A blood son can be disinherited. But the law will not allow you to disinherit and adopt the son because you made the choice. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. 36. If the son therefore make you free, <laughs> yeah. he has authority. You shall be free. Indeed. Indeed. And of course, Jesus did on his unique relationship with God. I, I, I can't go through all this. Y'all got to know. 37. I know you Abraham see. What you telling me? Tell me what I know. Like, like that's gonna make me cower down. I know who y'all. Which I know what your mouth say. But even he said in verse 39, if you were Abraham see, you do what Abraham did. And Abraham was the father of faithful. So why are you sitting there acting unfaithful to what you Abraham see? You don't if you Abraham see, you're not living like it, but even that's not enough. He said, you seek to kill me because my word had no place in you. I'm a, you, you want to kill the word of God, Abraham was faithful to the word of God. How many church members sitting in service every Sunday thinking evil about somebody? Preach up. Help us today. <laughs> Verse 38. I speak that which I have seen in my father. Just like you. But the problem is we got two different fathers. Hmm, hmm. Well, 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 who, who? Who you think my father is, Lord? In John 8, 44, you are of your father the devil. Having kind of lust for your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. A bold, not in the truth. Because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of mm, mm, mm. Father man. That's why you must testify that which you know and seen, but otherwise you can be testifying to the lie. Which means most of the time we need to get someone and shut up. <laughs> Good, this <Mr>. person. <laughs> One person, I ain't got two minutes. He said, so I can't blame you because you just like your dad. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. So ask yourself, who do you act like every day of your life? Do I, do I act? If you see me, if you see my thirsty self, now, I know what your son himself look like. That's that man in the mirror. That, that's the man in the mirror. But you know what? I'm going to mess you up real bad. We don't ever go in the mirror until we think we look halfway good. <laughs> that we get in the mirror style and profile. 
around him. So that Sunday man is the man in the mirror. But that Thursday man, what does he look like? Anybody got any questions? Anybody got any questions? Because my time is up. Freedom in the king. You're only free in him. Until you come to know Christ, you are condemning yourself to a lifetime of abundance. God bless you. Then again, it's Reverend Jennifer Smith, Pastor from St. Michigan Baptist Church, 2186 Hawkins Mill Road, Memphis, Tennessee. We thank you for joining us. Again, those who are watching on Facebook, please like and follow us. On YouTube, please subscribe. God bless you.